In this video, we're going to talk about scaphoid fractures, what they are, how they happen, and how they can be treated. So what is the scaphoid? There are eight small bones inside your wrist, which are called the carpal bones. One of them is the scaphoid, this one here on the thumb side of the wrist. Of all the carpal bones, this one is by far the most commonly injured. About 70% of carpal fractures are scaphoid fractures. How do scaphoid fractures happen? Scaphoid fractures tend to happen when a person falls heavily onto their outstretched hand. Of course, in this type of injury, the body weight is transmitted through the whole arm and hand, and fractures may occur in a number of different places. The scaphoid can break in several different locations, and where it breaks has a big impact on how it should be treated and how long it will take to heal. These fracture locations can be summarized as distal pole, the end of the scaphoid nearest to the thumb. These are the least risky scaphoid fractures and almost never need surgery. Six to eight weeks in a splint or cast and they are usually good to go. The waist, the slightly narrower central section of the scaphoid. This is a common location for fractures. If it is a hairline crack and completely undisplaced, it may be okay to treat this in a cast or splint, but it is likely to take 8-10 to 10 weeks to be well healed. Any hint of displacement and surgery is probably going to result in a better outcome. The proximal pole, the end of the scaphoid nearest to the wrist joint. Any fracture in this location should be reviewed by a surgeon, as these have the greatest risk of failing to heal properly due to disruption of the blood supply to part of the bone. What does it feel like? The scaphoid is located at the base of a small hollow, curiously called the anatomical snuff box, between two thumb tendons as they cross your wrist. Most scaphoid fractures are accompanied by pain around this snuff box location after a fall onto your hand. There will probably be swelling around the same area and it may be hard to see the shape of the snuff box. The exception to this is with some distal pole scaphoid fractures. This part of the bone is located on the palm side near the base of the thumb, about here, and this is where pain and swelling will be located Located, often with a graze on the skin from the fall. How can you be sure that it is a scaphoid fracture? This is a surprisingly tricky question because scaphoid fractures have a sneaky way of not always showing up on x-rays. If you have fallen onto your hand and have pain in the snuff box area, but the x-ray is normal, should you seek an MRI or CT scan to be sure? Well, the doctors in your emergency department will try a few extra movements and tests to see if a subtle scaphoid fracture might actually be there. For example, this handshake test where you try to keep your hand still as the doctor twists it, or this one where the doctor pushes the thumb down towards the scaphoid bone. None of these tests are great to prove that you do have a scaphoid fracture, but if they are pain-free, a scaphoid fracture is less likely. MRI is a really good test for scaphoid fractures, and also shows if the ligaments in the wrist have been injured. Your local doctor will advise you on whether an MRI is recommended in your particular case. What else might be causing these symptoms? Pain around the thumb and wrist area is very common after a fall, but most often it is not because of a scaphoid fracture. Other causes of pain include fractures of the radius near the wrist joint, other carpal bone fractures, wrist joint sprains, bone contusions, or bruising, irritation of underlying arthritis, especially at the base of the thumb, and nerve irritation. So what can be done? Like most fractures, scaphoid fractures need to be immobilized to heal. Traditionally, casts for scaphoid fractures have included both the wrist and the thumb. In recent years, research has indicated that it is safe to leave the thumb free as long as the wrist is immobilized. Very stable scaphoid fractures including many distal pole fractures, can be safely managed in a thermoplastic wrist splint like this. Simply placing your wrist in a cast is not always enough. Sometimes surgery is necessary to ensure the best chance of a good outcome. Please seek advice from an emergency department in your local area. We hope this has been a helpful review of scaphoid fractures, helping you understand why they are a bit notorious for being tricky to find on x-ray and tricky to treat. If you are concerned you might have a scaphoid fracture, please go to a good emergency department near you to ensure the injury is treated appropriately. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.